All right. Um, well, welcome to the webinar. And uh, my name is Jing Li. I'm the director of life sciences and uh, technology at Gem Pharmatech. I have my colleague Steve Smith on with me. Uh, Steve is the uh, speaker for today's webinar. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna give a short introduction to Steve and then Steve will share uh, the webinar with us uh, right after. So Steve is a research scientist and a business development professional with over two decades of experience in biotech drug discovery and business development. He has designed and conducted research in therapeutic areas spanning oncology, metabolic diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, inflammation, and immunology. He has also built in vivo and in vitro systems for disease model research. Prior to Gen Pharmatech, Steve has led the business development as Gliologics, which was acquired by Zogenix. Um, and then he returned to the bench to lead the development of models for exploring new therapeutics. Um, Steve has a PhD and a master's of science in microbiology from North Carolina State University. His bachelor's degree is in biology from Beloit College. Um, today, Steve is going to share uh, with us the recent, the most recent data on um, one of the newest disease models we have developed. A, is the FAD4T is a mouse model for Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. All right, Steve, the stage is yours. Great. Um, well, thank you so much, Jing. I really appreciate it and um, look forward to telling uh, the group about um, about our um, <clears throat> about Gem Pharmatech's uh, development uh, with uh, Alzheimer's disease models. So let me go to the full screen here. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so um, <clears throat> with um, <clears throat> With Gem Pharmatech, uh, we have a very large collection of genetically modified mouse models. And in particular, we're, uh, for this audience and in my scientific interest, uh, we have quite a few models of neurodegenerative disease, including the newly developed uh, FAD4T model that I'll be discussing today. And um, so the, uh, the disclaimer that we always have to show, legal disclaimer, um, <clears throat> So uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, <clears throat> very important and crucial disease, uh, primarily affecting um, older, uh, middle-aged, late middle-aged elderly people. Um, and Alzheimer's disease was identified in 1901 by uh, Dr. Alzheimer, who uh, examined patient who had uh, dementia. And the Alzheimer's, uh, or Dr. Alzheimer's, used uh, cell, cell staining techniques to identify the amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles within the cortical gray matter of the brain, which is the hallmark, um, okay, uh, which is the hallmark of, of the disease. In 1906, with his continued uh, pathological research, he linked these pathologic findings with the clinical symptoms of pre-senile pre uh, dementia. <clears throat> Alzheimer's disease is a central neurodegenerative disease with plaque accumulation, tangles, and a shrunken brain. In 2015, there were over 46 million people with Alzheimer's disease worldwide, more than the population of Spain, as an example. <clears throat> the number of, uh, of human patients is estimated to increase <clears throat> by nearly threefold by the year 2050. The total estimated worldwide cost of dementia in 2015 was over $800 billion, becoming a trillion dollar disease by 2018 and anticipated to rise to over 2 trillion by the year 2030. If dementia care were a country, it would be the world's 18th largest economy, more than the market values of many very large successful companies such as Apple um, and Google and others. <clears throat> Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia <clears throat> and it does not have an effective treatment at this point. As symptoms worsen, individuals uh, must rely on caregivers for their daily needs, resulting in serious social as well as financial burden. 
The graph on the left you see right now shows the increase in costs on patients and their families due to neurodegenerative diseases, nearly tripling from 2010 to 20, uh, 2030. On the right now you see um, that you can see that the single largest cause of neurological disease is Alzheimer's of all of the uh, various uh, neurodegenerative diseases, followed by traumatic brain injury, stroke, epilepsy, and chronic pain, and Parkinson's. <clears throat> okay. There are many hypotheses regarding the real drivers of Alzheimer's disease, including abnormal deposits of amyloid beta protein in the extracellular spaces between neurons, formation of tangled tau protein fibers, uh, inside the neurons, cholinergic neuron, uh, neuronal damage, inflammation, and oxidative stress. Many of the Alzheimer's disease models are based on the, uh, a, um, a beta hypothesis. Gem Pharmatech has also developed uh, models in, um, to test this as well. <clears throat> there are primary drivers uh, that are known drivers of Alzheimer's disease, including mutations in APP, PSEN1 and 2, uh, APOE4, and uh, TREM2, but also many other mutations and mutant loci uh, that are involved in disease. Uh, APP has uh, amyloidogenic and non-amyloidogenic pathways that it's involved in, in, um, in the body. In non-amyloidogenic pathways, soluble APP alpha is generated from the cleavage of APP by alpha secretase. Here we go. Um, it, and it shows biological functions and growth regulation and neuroprotection. In amyloidogenic pathways, APP is cleaved by beta secretase, uh, base one, and gamma secretase, forming A beta. In a healthy brain, the A beta 40 peptide is degraded, but in Alzheimer's patients, the A beta 42 peptide frag fragments accumulate, forming insoluble plaques. And these plaques, well, totally insoluble, and um, and they uh, um, uh, catalyze formation of additional uh, uh, molecules coming together. <clears throat> in patients with uh, many of these mutations, uh, here on the right, you can see uh, within the APP, there's mutations known as the Swedish mutation um, at 670, uh, 671, um, then also Florida mutation, London, and Indiana mutations. And in humans, these are the uh, most common mutations driving, uh, driving disease. Uh, more than 200 um, Alzheimer's disease therapeutics have been or are currently in the clinic. Um, shown here in this table, there's currently about, um, this is fairly current data um, within the last uh, five years, there were over a hundred um, uh, drugs and drug targets, primary targets are A-beta, tau, base one, and gamma secretase. However, few drugs make it to phase three or, the, or even the market, suggesting that there are more pr appropriate preclinical models that are that should be developed, need to be developed in order uh, to study and treat this disease. Animal models of uh, Alzheimer's disease are valuable tools to understand familial or early onset Alzheimer's disease. There are several classical Alzheimer's disease, such as <clears throat> Uh, several uh, classical models, including the APP P, um, presenilin, the 3X transgenic, and the 5X FAD, or uh, familial Alzheimer's disease. These, uh, these various models have a range of and combination of human, um, human mutations resulting in disease in the mouse models. So uh, Jump Pharmatech realized some of the uh, <clears throat> pros and cons of these mouse models. And with that knowledge and with the ability to make efficiently generate genetically modified mouse models with precise uh, mutational strategy, they've generated the, uh, the FAD4T mouse model and to really explore Alzheimer's disease in new directions. With this model, 
So as you might guess, there are four mutations. Two uh, of these transgenic mutations, Nokian mutations, are in the APP looking using the Swedish and Indiana mutations. And in PSEN1, there's also two mutations. <clears throat> this model has several advantages, including it develops A beta deposits by six months of age. And um, A beta deposits um, at four months of age are comparable to the 5X FAD model. <clears throat> Um, it's also uh, generated by Gem Pharmatech and has independent IP. The sales are not limited. Um, if someone, if a researcher is interested in the model, they can purchase the model from us. We can breed up the animal model and send animals to them. We can also internally conduct studies at our facilities um, in, in China, as well as uh, partners here in, um, in North America. And there's a favorable price to this model too, um, making it easier for um, <clears throat> not only academics, but industry groups as well to uh, use and explore this model in their research. Using an antibody that specifically reacts with A-beta plaques, we detected traces of A-beta deposition as early as one and a half months in the FAD4 T mice, with A-beta deposition increasing gradually with age as you can see here in these images. The A-beta plaques are found to be more severe in female mice than in males, which is consistent with uh, clinical uh, pathology in humans. This figure shows uh, data using uh, female A-beta, uh, female mice uh, and their A-beta plaques. Whoops. <clears throat> the data from collaborators, collaborators uh, of ours with this mouse model shows that um, when compared to the 5X FAD on the bottom, uh, that eight beta plaques in the cortex and hippocampus of uh, four month old uh, FAD 4T mice is comparable to that of uh, similar age uh, 5X FAD mice. Uh, oops. Astrocyte activation was detected in FAD 4T mice at two and a half months of age, and significant glial hypoplasia was observed at seven months of age. <clears throat> the novel object recognition task is based on the natural tendency of mice to investigate novel objects instead of a familiar one. <clears throat> mice were first given 20 minute habituation with no objects in the open field, and then a test phase consisting of two trials beginning at 24 and 48 hours later. <clears throat> in the first, two, uh, first uh, trial, two different objects were placed in opposite corners of the open field. <clears throat> uh, and then the mice were allowed to explore them for 10 minutes. And then uh, 24 hours later, one of the objects was re replaced with a novel object and a mouse was again placed in the maze for 10 minutes. The mice either explored the novel objects for a longer time, indicating memory of the familiar object or they or exploration of the novel and familiar objects for the same length of time, indicating a lack of recall, lack of curiosity or lack of memory for the familiar, familiar object present during the initial phase. <clears throat> So you can see that there um, was uh, there were changes, slight changes in in the animals, with uh, a bit more of a disagreement between wild type and uh, the FAD four T animals in the uh, in the female mice. <clears throat> uh, in the uh, <clears throat> uh, in the uh, um, uh, the Morris water maze test, it was used to measure spatial learning and memory. The maze is equally divided into four quadrants with one hidden platform. The training sessions were conducted in four consecutive days with four trials per day, followed by a probe test on the fifth day. In each training session, mice were randomly released into the four quadrants and allowed to have 90 seconds for finding the hidden platform and 30 seconds to test to rest on the platform. And then if mice didn't find the platform within 90 seconds, we guided to the platform um, where it stayed for 30 seconds. <clears throat> for three month old mice, the FAD 4T mice showed um, natural learning and memory abilities. 
<clears throat> compared with wild type mice. And that's uh, shown here in figures A and B. While in a spatial search experiment, there's a trend toward cognitive decline in FAD 4T mice, uh, female mice, compared with wild type mice, as you can see here, some disagreement, um, <clears throat> indicating by uh, less transition numbers, uh, less time spent in the uh, target quadrant, and that is shown in figures C and D here. <clears throat> Again, uh, another uh, continued work uh, with a collaborator. Um, they found that um, mice that were subjected to a learning paradigm of, of the water maze, uh, Morris water maze for six days, uh, followed by a probe trial on day seven. In each training session trial, mice were randomly released into the water from two quadrants of the pool and allowed to have 60 seconds for finding the hidden platform, 15 seconds to rest. As shown in the learning sessions, the female and male uh, mice displayed significantly longer latency, <clears throat> indicating the FAD 4T mice were impaired <clears throat> in their spatial learning capacity. In the probe test, the number of crossing platforms was decreased significantly in the female FAD 4T mice. <clears throat> These results indicate five-month-old uh, FAD 4T mice have spatial learning and memory impairment. Cognitive uh, deficits were observed in FAD 4T mice <clears throat> in both males and females. And um, with uh, the actual moving distances, and this is conducted using an open field test, um, in the moving distances, <clears throat> the wild type and the FAD males had similar um, moving distances as females. Uh, and the velocity, the speed at which they're moving when they're roaming around was similar. However, the, uh, the time set spent in the center, uh, which uh, shows that they are, um, <clears throat> they do not possibly have uh, fear, fear conditioning um, is uh, very different uh, in the uh, both males and females. And the uh, time in the center area, <clears throat> again, so time in the center, um, was uh, similar, or uh, was uh, dissimilar in the uh, uh, FADs. <clears throat> in a test uh, looking at therapeutic efficacy of a uh, <clears throat> uh, experimental drug that's uh, in the animals, uh, tests were done <clears throat> at a low, medium, and high dose. So there's, as you see <clears throat> on the x-axis, each uh, examination um, looking at um, over time, over training time, um, that uh, looking, the animals were not, um, regardless of how much uh, the treatment was, uh, they were not being, um, they were not reaching uh, near what the control wild type animals were as far as um, escape um, in their, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, in their movement, in their cage. Interestingly, there appeared to be some slight improvements in the low dose treated animals compared to the other FAD 4T animals. However, this was not observed uh, in all parameters uh, or in all, in all animals. There is still a fair amount of variability um, seen uh, within even the reasonably successful group. Um, in this table uh, compares the uh, <clears throat> disease physiology of the FAD 4T mice with the APP um, PS1 animals, the 3X transgenics, and the 5X FAD models. Just looking at the deposition of A-beta plaque, uh, the uh, neurofibrillary tangles uh, behavior um, with the mutations that are present that drive disease in the model in the models. Next, uh, be discussing the um, Alzheimer's disease plus mouse model. Oops. Um, uh, chromosome one um, consomic strain. And uh, with 
and these are new models to explore Alzheimer's disease pathology and other uh, neurodegenerative um, diseases and uh, explore therapeutic efficacy with these mouse models. The Alzheimer's uh, disease, um, the 80 plus mouse model, um, just looking at um, what is it in the, uh, in the human condition that um, makes Alzheimer's disease, <clears throat> despite having the same primary driver mutations, why is the disease so much different in one patient versus another? And so uh, just looking <clears throat> around at known uh, genome-wide uh, variation, um, SNP, SNP analysis, and where those are, what genes they are, um, has had us just looking at uh, from a basic research standpoint and considering what we could possibly do to uh, create a new model, unique model that might be better representative of human disease. And uh, so our goal will develop an improved mouse model for preclinical research and start constructing a consomic mouse strain um, of consomic, uh, chromosome one, consomic, consomic one, CSS. And uh, with that, uh, bred with a, a wild mouse strain, uh, the donor strain, and, <clears throat> uh, and we uh, selected animals <clears throat> through many, many rounds of breeding, selected animals that had uh, uh, chromosome one from the wild strain and uh, were otherwise um, inbred uh, mouse strain. Uh, upon initial examination of these, uh, of these animals, <clears throat> you can see that um, they have um, somewhat improved uh, movement uh, for both the males on the left and uh, fem females not so um, so different on the right um, <clears throat> uh, with the uh, consomic strain versus the wild strain. <clears throat> when looking in the water mate, uh, Morse water maze, looking at uh, platform location crosses, <clears throat> um, there was some difference in the uh, in the males. <clears throat> In the uh, time spent in quadrants, um, again, there's some, um, some difference in the males and the actual speed was about the same for both um, the consomic strain males and females with their wild type counterparts. <clears throat> um, when crossed, uh, when this uh, consomic strain was crossed with the 5X FAD mouse model and uh, and tests were run. Uh, it, interestingly, we saw that uh, the, uh, the 5X FAD with uh, the chromosome one uh, consomic from wild mice uh, actually performed a little bit worse than the, uh, uh, than the wild type animals and uh, worse than the uh, <clears throat> uh, consomics on their own. So some combination of the 5X FAD and the wild uh, uh, chromosome one gene variants um, altered the uh, behavior and uh, activity in those animals. <clears throat> uh, we also saw that uh, with these mouse models uh, that um, they have uh, some spatial memory def deficits um, that are greater than in the 5X FAD alone. And uh, the, the chromosome one mice, the 765 animals, um, are actually as on their own, um, a very, uh, a very low absence uh, in um, Alzheimer's disease plaques. And so for some reason, the combination of the 5X FAD as, along with the uh, consomic chromosome one resulted in somewhat wor slightly worse disease, which became statistically significant upon um, histological as well as behavioral analyses. <clears throat> and um, uh, this slide is uh, showing that uh, uh, with, within GEM Pharmatech, we have a wide range of um, 
of research models that are in development or have been developed for uh, a wide range of neurodegenerative diseases, including prion diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, <clears throat> um, Huntington's disease, and um, Lewy body disorder and uh, uh, FTD. And those with the STARS, uh, those have mouse models that are currently developed or are in development. <clears throat> Gem Pharmatech has also developed a wide range of humanized mouse models of CNS disease. <clears throat> and, uh, and many of these are <clears throat> being released or uh, they will be released very soon. Um, and, um, and with these, uh, we hope to work with uh, outside groups to help characterize the mouse models for their research, um, for their own internal research studies, but also um, if, uh, if we could work with groups who could characterize the mouse models for our own, um, uh, for better understanding the mouse models themselves, um, that would help us and our marketing team and we would love to work with you, anyone who is interested in working on these or any of our other neurodegenerative disease mouse models uh, to bring them forward and bring them out into the uh, research market. We also have a, a, other models that, as I mentioned, that have been developed or uh, again are coming forward. Um, and these, um, being released or have been released and currently available, including the FAD4Ts. Um, and uh, that is that concludes uh, my discussion for today. And I'd be very happy to hear what you, uh, um, hear your thoughts, your interests, any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Steve. And, um, uh, I'll answer the first question. So we got uh, a couple of questions in the chat box, a couple of questions in the Q&A. I'll um, uh, repeat the first question and uh, I'll answer that so you can take a little break. So the first question is, will the slides presented at the webinar be available after uh, the talk to the attendees? The answer is yes, um, but you are highly encouraged to email us so that we know who to send it to after the event. And uh, so Steve, um, I'll read the second question to you. What is the donor strain of the origin of chromosome one in the consomic mice? Um, the, uh, the donor, um, I am pretty certain that it is a wild mouse strain. Um, and I'm not sure where that wild strain came from, but um, that was, um, I think that may have been on a slide that was deleted from today's presentation. Yeah, I, I can chime in to, uh, yeah, sure. uh, to help Steve out. I did, uh, you know, we have another uh, webinar before that we also mentioned the consomic strain as one of our uh, uh, methodology going forward uh, to generate new models for disease exploration. So the consomic strain, uh, these are really, as Steve said, wild animals we caught from the wild. This particular yeah, yeah. one is, I believe in, uh, in China, Yunnan province, if you are familiar with uh, the geography in China. All right, um, next question. What are the differences between the FAD 4T model versus the 5X FAD? I think you mentioned that uh, during your webinar, if you don't mind, can you, you know, just highlight a couple of points that you wanna share with the audience again? Uh, yeah, um, it's um, <clears throat> many of the same mutations um, in uh, in the five X as well as the FAD four T models, and um, uh, it's really that um, the <clears throat> uh, the FAD four T has two mutations in APP: the Swedish mutation and Indiana mutations. Whereas, um, uh, and then in the PSN one. Uh, they've got um, two very specific mutations in there. Um, and so it's similar to the 5X, um, but uh, the, five, the 5X also has the Florida um, and the Swedish mutations. Um, and 
um, one of the same um, uh, piece and mutations. All right. Uh, second one I saw from the Q&A for the Consomic 765 model, is yes. it still un it is still unknown what caused the difference between the 765 versus the wild type mouse? Yes, that's still unknown. Uh, we're uh, doing some work internally. Um, in China, we have collaborations with, I believe, two academic groups uh, that are exploring those um, those differences. Um, and so we're very excited about working with any other groups to help explore this as well. Um, we know the value of doing some genomic uh, profiling um, and we just don't have the bandwidth to approach that. But if uh, some group would like to work with us on this, it would be, we would really enjoy working and learning about the model more. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, fabulous. So I'm now coming back to the chat box. Uh, I got your email, Alexander. Uh, we'll definitely make sure to send the depart point uh, to you after the event. I also see another question. Do any of your mouse models exhibit increased oxidative stress? Um, uh, we've had, um, we do have uh, some, but um, uh, within the KOAP um, library, uh, there are certainly some models that are designed to explore, um, for instance, mitochondrial genes um, or proteins that are important in mitochondrial function. And those, um, those could be important for looking at oxidative stress. Um, and, and then there's a whole host of other models uh, within the KOAP library for looking at oxidative stress and, and its ties to inflammation. For these neurodegenerative models, we haven't generated any specifically for that purpose, but I'm certain that there are some that would have great application for that. Mm -hmm. I think this question seems to you know, tag into the phenotyping oh, uh, right. of the models. So Steve, you wanna share some you know, more information regarding model co-development? Uh, that we do? Well, uh, yes. I mean, that's an excellent point that uh, uh, we have uh, certain, uh, certain uh, things that, um, you know, we have a battery of tests that we're conducting on our mouse models, but we can't obviously come up with the plan for running every study that's out there. And so if you have if you would like to work with us and conduct some specific studies, because you're probably more of an expert at these uh, oxidative stress assays, that would be wonderful. And we would be very happy to work with you. And we, you know, please email us, contact us, and we will we'll discuss supplying sufficient animals for you to get going with your research. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, I see a, a question. Um, I'll read it out to you. and. Uh, I think we can probably both share some perspective on that. So the question is, are there history slides that are available for immune studies? History slides? Um, I'm guessing, oh, so, uh, you know, Paul, you can text more in the chat box to let us know. I'm guessing um, your overview at the beginning or your reveal at the beginning yeah. for the neurodegenerative di uh, uh, disease area. I think Paul is probably- Oh, histology, ah, about, okay. Um, yeah, I can send um, uh, with the slide deck, I can send histology and we have extra slides that didn't make it to today's presentation for histology as well as behavioral assays um, that I would be happy to share with you and um, discuss further, further assays that we've conducted. But Steve, do we have histology slices that are available for immune studies? Oh, um, I don't believe we have histology slides that are currently available, but we could make some available for you since we have the colony. If that's what you need is just histology, uh, conduct histology, we could send you frozen samples that you could, or preserve samples that you could then stain later, or we could work with you and have, um, with our mouse models, we could, we could collect some tissue and stain for you. 
Yeah. So Paul put in the chat box, yes, for target validation. validation. So I think this is really pivoting into a model validation. You yeah, know, a model I see that. Establishment. Yeah. So Paul, highly recommend that um, you let us know your email. You can, you know, put in the chat box as Alexander did, or you can, um, you know, offline uh, use our contact us on the website to let us know um, you talked with us and you want to have um, further communication regarding the histology analysis with us and we'll respond to you uh, accordingly. All right, uh, I'll check one more time in the Q&A. Okay, there's one more saying, um, did you compare weights over time or record grooming behaviors or locomotion in the cage? Any sleep um. recording? Yeah, um, there, uh, in one of the slides or two, a couple of slides, there was um, uh, locomotion just looking at um, uh, the speed that animals moved. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, we have information on distance traveled as well. Um, so time spent moving, distance traveled, and speed. And in slide I showed, uh, not all of that information could be summarized. Um, and I could send that information to you if, if you would like that. Um, and I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if body weights were captured. I, in my experience, I certainly would have captured body weights and I assume that our research team did as well, but I'm not sure of that off the top of my head. Um, I can check on that um, or other behaviors. I see grooming, um, and that's definitely uh, um, something that changes uh, from model to model. And I don't uh, know if that has been um, qualified or quantified in these animals. Um, I can inquire about that internally, however. Yeah, and I guess sleep recording, probably we wouldn't have had. But I again, doubt it, yeah. Yeah, but again, you know, we can inquire with the R&D team, uh, make sure uh, we don't miss information. Um, yeah, so let us know or contact us after the event. Um, all right, checking one more time. I don't see any more questions. So um, with that, I will say uh, we will conclude today's webinar and thank you again for joining us and uh, uh, I will see you next time. Thank you very much for attending. I appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for your interest. Bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye.